Hey guys, Pastor Jurgen here. I'm so glad you're tuning into one of our powerful messages that is guaranteed to absolutely elevate your life to another level. At Awaken, we only want to preach fresh, real, powerful to help you grow stronger in your walk with God, develop your faith so you can take more territory. I'm praying that God blesses you and enriches your soul as you listen to this amazing word from God. God bless you. Um, I'm gonna pray quick and then, and then we'll take a seat. Father, I just thank you, Lord. Father, that you are the King of Kings. You are the Lord of Lords. God, you love us so deeply. Your desire, Father God, is that we would step into our callings, God. When you were knitting us together in our mother's womb, Lord, you had specific plans for each and every one of us, God to live life and to live it abundantly, Father. So I pray tonight, Father, that you would impart into your people, Lord God, into myself, Lord God, what we need uh, for the days ahead, God, what we need for the next season of our life, Lord. I thank you that you're releasing hope, you're releasing vision, Father, you're releasing business ideas tonight, Father, and we thank you in advance. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Go ahead and get, grab your seats. So we, we are still in It's a Wonderful Life series. Who's seen that movie by a show of hands? I saw it once a, once a long time ago. And, I, you know, thinking through it, you know, I, I really want to talk tonight uh, really on a question. The title, uh, the official title of my message is really a question. And that question is, is wealth wonderful? What do you think? What do you think? Who thinks, you know... We, we hear in the world, you know, more money, more problems. Uh, we saw in the movie, It's a Wonderful Life, somebody considering taking their life over the stress and the anxiety of not having wealth. So who thinks it's wonderful? I'm just curious. All right, good, good, good. Who's like, well, I'm not sure yet. I'm not sure yet. Anybody? Anybody? See a couple honest, honest people? All right. I appreciate that. So I, I, I want to I wanna talk about this tonight because, you know, uh, Albert Einstein has a quote around compound interest. He says, compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. He who understands it, earns it. So most everybody has heard of compound interest. But to me, if your money is not growing at 10, 20, 30 percent, then do we really understand it? And I believe it's the same with the concept of wealth. We've all heard of wealth, right? We've all, you know, we, we like money, right? We, you know, life is easier when we have more of it. Uh, we could have a greater impact on the world uh, around us. We could provide great things, uh, you know, for our families uh, and whatnot. But it, it's really just, you know, do we understand it? And I don't, I don't necessarily believe every Christian person is called to be a multimillionaire, but I do know that every Christian person is called to live in abundance. Yeah. And I've seen people uh, earn, that earn 80 grand a year living in abundance. I know people right now earning three, four, five million a year living paycheck to paycheck, literally. So it, it comes a lot down to, you know, how do we understand it and do we operate God's way? I think one of the biggest mistakes Christian entrepreneurs make is we feel called by God to go into the marketplace. And most of us are, right? I mean, the, the percentage of Christians that are fault, called to like traditional, you know, ministry in the church uh, is a very small percentage. The rest of us are called into uh, the marketplace, but many times we, we know we have this call. We know God has, you know, inspired us to start a business, but we go try to build with secular mindsets and secular tools. So I, I want to start, I want to give you what I, what I, this is my definition of the word wealth. To me, wealth is financial abundance that gives you options. Who would like to have more options in the area of wealth? Who would like to be able to just write checks, you know, bigger to just charitable organizations and, you know, and help friends and family members, right? Financial abundance that gives us options. And I wanted to start off really by defining it just because the devil is very, very good at redefining words. We see right now in our culture how he's redefining marriage. How he, I mean, even like people can't even agree anymore on the definition of a woman. I mean, it's, it's, it's people are literally losing uh, their minds. But there, there's a principle, you know, they teach this in seminaries. It's called the law of first mentions. And what, what it says is if you want to know what God, how God defines something, 
If you want to know how God feels about something, go back to the first time he mentions that thing, and that is what it is, regardless of how culture tries to redefine it, regardless of what you know, laws are passed you know, by you know, our administration or whatever it is. So when you go, the, the book of Genesis, you know, chapters 1 and chapters 2 are just such brilliant you know, passages of Scripture where God kind of lays out the framework. And we, you see in those chapters, you see marriage, right? Yeah. You see two genders. You see sex. But you also see work and you see wealth. God placed, you know, Adam in the garden, you know, and really to cultivate uh, the land. And he placed within the land resources. He placed gold. He placed pearl. He placed onyx. And really, the word cultivate means to acquire uh, and develop, to acquire. So he placed Adam in the garden to go acquire you know, resource out of the earth. And, and resource, and resource, you know, gold and onyx and all that, that's, you know, obviously we still have gold today, but, you know, money today in terms of paper currency uh, is a resource. And all a resource is, a, is a reflection of the source. It's the, God is our source. And, but money, resource, gold, all of this stuff is a reflection of the source. And when we receive things from God, as long as we, we keep you know, whatever God places in our hand, as long as we keep that hand open to where it could be taken out and given over here, taken out and given over here, whatever it is, then, you know, that, that resource will not control us. But Adam placed him there. So really the first profession that I see ever in the history of the earth was a property manager. Uh, I definitely am. I'm a, I'm a real estate guy. Uh, I, I, I like that. I like that for sure. But that, that is the, you know, the, the, it was wealth. God placed it there for man to cultivate and develop. And really, I mean, is wealth wonderful? It could be, but it could not be. We see that very gold that was cultivated from the ground, you know, later on when Moses went up uh, on, on the mountain to get the Ten Commandments, you know, we saw that gold turned into a, a calf, a golden calf that people were worshiping instead of God. We've also seen that same gold, you know, that David used to build the temple to usher the presence of God, you know, into that region, right? So it's not, it's not that it's, it's wonderful or it's not wonderful. It's really, do we understand it and are we building it God's way? Deuteronomy 8.18, I'm sure you all heard this, but we could, we could throw it up on the screen behind me, and I'll, I'll read it here from my notes. But Deuteronomy 8.18 says, But remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth. So God's not going to give us the ability to produce something that is not good for us, right? So he, he, he wants to put it in our hands. And I find that God gives us the ability to create wealth. How we create wealth is he puts inside of us specific abilities. He wires you certain gifts, certain talents, you know, that, that you're going to go out and use. And in Isaiah 48, uh, 17, um, you'll see it on the screen also behind me here. It, it says, I am the Lord your God who teaches you to profit who leads you in the way that you should go. And it's really interesting, this word teaches, like if you look at the original meaning of that word, it actually means to, to uh, train and develop a skill set. It means, it's not, so it's not like teaching, like you're listening to a teacher, you're taking notes. It literally translates out to, to you know, to teach. What did I just say? I wrote it down here. Is to train and develop a specific skill set. And the word profit, actually, in this scripture, is not talking about money. Uh, it basically is saying to be valuable. So you could read this scripture behind me. It could translate this way and be how the author originally intended it, to say, I train you as men and women of God to develop skills that will make you valuable in the marketplace. And that's what God is looking to do. And that's what I'm believing tonight. I remember being 21 years old getting out of the Navy, not having a clue what to do with my life. Really, at the time, felt like I wasn't really good at anything. Like, anyone ever feel that way sometimes? Like, oh, man, it's just doesn't, nothing amazing. I don't really have these special talents or, or anything like that. I remember at 21 years old feeling that way and going to a service, and I've shared this before, but a guest speaker asking me to stand up and 
prophesying into my life that God's gonna use you to buy and sell real estate across the country and train Christian entrepreneurs how to do this stuff. And, and I remember listening to that at the time, being, you know, living with my dad. I walked to church that day because I didn't even have a car and uh, never obviously owned a home or anything like that. And um, so, but you know, ne- you know, next morning just, you know, activated that word by going and just getting my real estate license and beginning to learn um, a specific skill. And so I, I definitely encourage that. I know, how many of you, just out of curiosity for me, in the room right now, you're in your 20s. You're in your 20s. Wow, that's a lot, a lot of people in the room. So to, to me, like, you know, in your 20s, man, that's a time where you want to you wanna get out there. You want to try different things and, and kind of see, you know, what, because you'll try different things and certain things, it's like, it's like hitting into a wall. But then other things, you'll feel life on it. You'll feel God's presence on it. You'll, you'll just feel like, oh, man, this is, pre- this is, uh, this is really cool. I want to pursue. I want to learn uh, more about that. But I've been in the marketplace for 23 years, you know, since getting out of the Navy at uh, 21 years old. I'm 44 uh, years old now. And in that time, I've created a lot of wealth. I've lost all of it. (laughs) Uh, I've gone bankrupt, and I've created a lot of wealth again. And I have recently just stepped into a season of, like my wife was talking about, just uh, abundance above and beyond what I, I, I was even hoping or imagining, you know, was possible. And so I want, thank you, thank you. So I, I, want, I want to share with you, I, I want to share with you just, you know, three main things that I believe if you feel called by God. First of all, who feels called by God to go into the marketplace, whether it's working a job for somebody else, whether it's maybe starting your own business in the future. I mean, that's pretty much um, all of us, um, all of us. So there's really three things that I've found over the years that you, is important to understand because God has no obligation to place wealth in our hands if we're not doing it his way. The Bible talks more about money, whether you like it or not, than any other topic. God has a lot to say about it, and there's very specific things and ways that he asks. So the first thing is really understanding what is God's purpose for placing wealth in your hands. What is God's purpose? So there's two things. How many things? Uh, Everyone can say it. How many things? Two. Two. Number one is to provide, and then number two is to promote. So God wants to place wealth into our hands to provide for our families, to provide for future generations, uh, to really have us enjoy uh, this earth. To, you know, I I believe God is happy when we take our family on vacations, right? As long as we don't put it on our credit card and we can afford it. I, I believe God is happy you know, you know, to do that. He wants us to enjoy the creation. He wants us to, you know, really above any other people on the earth, we are his children. He wants us to enjoy. So wealth, he wants us to provide for ourselves for, and for future generations. But the second part, and this is so important, is the purpose of wealth is to promote God's kingdom agenda on the earth. Yeah. And this is where, this is where, you know, churches that will take flack about the prosperity gospel is, and this is definitely not awaken, but if they leave out the second part where God just wants to get you that Mercedes, God just wants to get you that big house, God just wants to provide for your family, God just wants you to get this, but they leave out the part about promoting God's kingdom agenda. And the thing is this, is if you go out and try to create wealth with only you in mind, only your family in mind, then you're going to struggle. And if God, and if you do break through and you do get money into your hands, then that money very easily can turn into an idol. And I've learned that the devil will also help people get wealthy. You know, hundred percent he will. Why wouldn't he? Like if he sees a Christian called by God, to create wealth, and and that person is not doing it God's way, millions of dollars start flowing in, they're not using it or even thinking about promoting the kingdom on earth, then that thing's gonna turn into an idol, and then what started out with good intent, you know, will now control and hold that person back. So it's really, it's providing for your family, and God wants you to provide for your family. Why in the world wouldn't he? I remember in 2008, just, you know, after going bankrupt, losing our home, Moving into an extra bedroom at my dad's house. Me and Claudia were only married a year. We were pregnant with my older daughter, uh, Juliana. And I, I remember not being able to provide. And 
getting you know, state assistance and all, all of these things. And it, it just was such a depressing, low you know, feeling. But thank God, you know, God didn't leave me there. Thank God I, I kept believing and I, and I kept pressing forward. But make no mistake, God wants to bring wealth into your life to provide for you and your loved ones and to promote his kingdom on this earth. Number two is there is a prerequisite for wealth. So the purpose is to provide and to promote God's kingdom. But there's a prerequisite for God to release wealth into our hands, into our lives. And that prerequisite is faithfulness. It is faithfulness. And faithfulness in the market translates to multiplication. It translates to multiplication. We've all heard this. Let me, let me read this. Uh, if you guys, if you could put Luke 19, um, verse 11 on the board. I didn't, I didn't plan on, sh- on reading this whole thing, but um, I think it would be good. While they were listening to this, he went on to tell them a parable. So this is Jesus telling a story. Because he was, uh, he was near Jerusalem and the people thought that the kingdom of God was going to appear at once. He said, a man of noble birth went to a distant country to have himself appointed king and then return. So he called 10 of his servants and gave them 10 minas. That's three months wages. Put this money to work. Make this money work. So he said, until I come back. You can go ahead. Thank you. But, but his subjects hated him and sent him a delegation after him to say, we don't want this man to be our king. He was made king, however, and returned home. Then he sent for the servants to whom he had given the money in order to find out what they had gained with it. Who knows we serve a God of gain, not a God of loss. We serve a God of abundance, not a God of lack. And if you're in here tonight and you're, you're in lack, it's okay. It is okay. When you apply these things, God, God, will, God will turn it around. He's, he is not a liar. He's not a liar. This is what his word says. So he, uh, he was made king. However, return, I already, I already read this one, uh, to see what they gained with it. The first one came and said, sir, your mina has earned 10 more. So servant number one, 10x the money. God, you gave me the money. I 10x it. Here you go. So well done, good And faithful servant, it says in another translation, his master replied, because you have been trustworthy in a very small matter, take charge of 10 cities. You can go ahead. The second came and said, sir, your mina has earned five more. So the second one, five X the money. Uh, The master answered, take charge of five cities. Then another servant came and said, sir, here is your mina. I have kept it laid away in a piece of cloth loser. I, I was afraid. <laughs> Saving money is the worst thing you could do with money. Uh, expect, like, especially in today's culture, by the saving money is the worst thing you could do with money. Uh, if you have money sit, uh, sitting in a Wells Fargo account at a quarter percent interest, inflation is that nine, we're losing money. Uh, so you could, the only person that God gets mad at in this whole thing, as you're going to see in the moment, is the one that saved money. So I was afraid of you, he said. And that's why he didn't invest, because you are a hard man. You take what you did not put in, and you reap what you did not sow. Why then don't you, why didn't you put your money on deposit so that when it came back, I could have collected it with interest? I think the next one should be the, the last one. Is that it? His master replied, I will judge you by your own words, you wicked servant. Uh, you, uh, you knew, did you, that I'm a hard man taking out what I did not put in and reaping what I did not sow. So let's go back to the first two. One guy 10x the money, one guy 5x the money. Yep. The compliment that he got from his master is, you are good and you are faithful. Yeah. So what, what did they do to make them get that label of being a faithful servant? They multiplied. And the only one that gets the the, the title of the wicked servant, as I said, was it was it wrong that I called him a loser? Yeah, I don't I don't I don't know him. I don't know him. But uh (laughs) but uh but he saved the money. So God God has not called us to maintain. God has called us to multiply. And why did that one wicked servant, why did he maintain? Well, it says it right in there. He maintained because he was afraid. 
And when God calls you into the marketplace to start a business, to, you know, to uh, work and serve another man's business or another woman's business, you know, you have to face fear head on and you have to be okay with stepping out uh, and taking risk. As my wife shared, we took a big risk. And it's interesting, you know, one, one part of the story she didn't tell you is when I re resigned uh, from this specific job or company I was working for, um, I put in my resignation and they, they, like an hour later, they, they called me in to meet with them and I'm sitting in this office and they, they look at me and say, you, you, you can't quit. And um, I'm like, um, why? <laughs> I'm like, I, I, I kind of just did. And, um, but, uh, but they go on to tell me that, that uh, their, their company, they got an offer from another company to acquire them. And, um, and it was about an $80 million offer. And they said, we know when other companies acquire companies, what, really what they're buying is the team. So if you leave, uh, you could blow the deal for us. Uh, just because I, I was a, an important team member. And uh, so anyways, I, I just said, no, God's, you know, God's called me to do this. I, I have to, you know, I'm like, I know you don't understand this, but God's called me to do this. Um, I, I, I'm just sure of it. So they said, you're, you're very emotional right now, Jeff. You're not thinking clearly. <laughs> you know, go, go, go think about it. Let's, let's meet. So, uh, so I go and I meet with them again. And, and again, I told them no. Um, and then they offered me 10% of the deal, which um, five, eight million dollars or whatever it was. And I remember saying, no, it, it's not about the money. God's called me to do this. And then I remember driving home in my car, like almost crying, God, what am I doing? What is, how are you going to call me? You, of all the times to call me to do that, I mean, I mean, can't, we can wait six months, can't we? We can wait a year. Um, and, um, but, 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 but we step out, and it's just been amazing how God's been orchestrating things and um, you know, what we're doing and on pace to do makes that offer from them actually look very small now, and, and, which is amazing. And, and, but but when, call, when God calls you out, he's going to go ahead of you, and he's going to open doors. I was, I was um, part, of, part of my business, I, we didn't even plan on doing this, but I was approached by uh, a very large, uh, you know, also a Christian company that liked what we were doing, and um, we were talking about doing a partnership together that could be, you know, super lucrative. And basically, the relationship is like they're the setters, I'm the closers in the deal, and they fly me out to, uh, you know, so they could get to know me, I could get to know them, and um, I'm going to sit in their event on a Saturday. I fly in on a Friday night, and um, so I'm going down. I'm sitting like in the hotel, bar, restaurant area, working on my laptop. And the owner texted me. He's like, hey, are you here yet? I said, yeah, I'm, I'm sitting in the bar area. What's up? Two minutes later, he walks over, and uh, he was in the restaurant, you know, just about to sit down with dinner. He's like, hey, I want you to meet, you know, my team members and some, some other people that, you know, I knew, I knew going there that it's very important that these people like me, you know, that they feel like I'm a good fit. Uh, so they're all standing up. There's about six of them. I go over, and I, I'm literally 30 seconds into it, shaking their hands, saying hello. And then all of a sudden, this waitress walks alongside of me. And I, I, I look at her, and she's, like, crying, smiling, almost laughing. And I'm like, hey, what's going on? So the night before, two of these guys were in the restaurant eating by themselves. And they do this thing I love. I would encourage taking this, all of us doing this. But when they get served from, by a waitress, they say, hey, thank you so much. We're going to pray over our food. Is there anything we could pray for you for? And so this was the night before. So, so the waitress says, my father was diagnosed with cancer. He goes into the doctors tomorrow morning and, um, you know, to do another test and, um, you know, to figure out a treatment plan. So that was the night before. So now I'm there. She walks alongside of me, smiling, crying, laughing, all this stuff. And I'm like, what's going on? And she points at these two guys, David and Jason, and she says, your God healed my father. And, and come on, that's, that's what he does. That's our God. That's our God. And so... So I, I immediately look at this, this girl, because like everyone, like every, she says this, and everyone's like kind of stunned. And I said, that's amazing. I'm like, Jesus healed your dad. I'm like, do you know him? Do you have a relationship with him? And she's like, no. And I'm like, do you want to know the God that healed your dad? And she says, yes. And so right in this bar, 
In Denver, Colorado, I lead this young woman to Christ. We all pray for her. They give her tickets to the event the next morning, pick her up in a limousine, make her feel like a princess. And that, and so remember, in this potential you know, partnership, they're the, they're the setters, I'm the closer. So the owner of the company was like, this is amazing. You know, the, 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 the Benham set it up by praying for their dad. Jeff closed it, leading her to Christ. And it was like, and it was like the deal was closed in that moment. And then the rest of the weekend was just working out the details. But that is our God. We, that, that is our God. But please understand that, you know, we're, we're doing some really cool stuff now. And God is opening up a lot of cool doors. But I got that word almost 20 years ago. You know, we read stories in the Bible like Joseph, and obviously, you know, how God used him, and we could read the three chapters, you know, in 10 minutes. That represents 17 years of that man's life. And there's no indication in the Bible anywhere that Joseph wasn't faithful. The indications are he remained faithful. And we haven't been perfect over the last 20 years, far from it, but we've tried our best. And that faithfulness leads to multiplication. And then number three is when we understand God's true purpose for wealth, we understand the prerequisite being faithfulness, the rewards of wealth are really threefold. Is number one, is a simple reward of wealth is income to provide for our families. The the devil does not want us to be able to provide for ourselves. He wants us dependent on government. He wants us dependent on family. If you guys could pull up 1 Thessalonians 4, uh, verses 11 11 through 12. Um, I have it here as well. Make it your ambition to lead a quiet life. You should mind your own business and work with your hands, just as we told you. So your daily life will win the respect of outsiders and so that you will not be dependent on anybody. So the reward of building wealth God's way is is independence, where we are dependent on nobody but our Father. And another benefit of wealth is inheritance. In Proverbs uh, 13, uh, 22, it says a good man, a good woman, leaves an inheritance for her children's children. And remember in that parable of the talents, he said good and faithful servant, right? So an inheritance that lives beyond us. You know, I, I, I don't know about you, but I wasn't born into a home that taught me about, you know, God's provision and abundance and things like that. Many of us are born into families with poverty mindsets, and we're the ones that have to, you know, break that curse. We're the ones that have to start a new path. And with Christ in us, we can. And the third reward of wealth is influence. Ultimately, those men that invested and they 10 x 5 x the money, they were given influence over cities. And, you know, Pastor John and Becky will be the first ones to tell you that they cannot take the city of San Diego on their own. It has got to be a collective effort of God's people that are going out on a mission to provide for their families and to build God's kingdom on this earth. And there's a move right now happening in the Christian church like I've never seen before in the marketplace. Billy Graham prophesied it. The time is now. The time is now. I love what Elon Musk is doing with Twitter, but man, I wish that came from somebody in the church. Man, and, but, but those days, those days are coming. And, you know, there, there's a lot of, you know, as I've traveled the country and, you know, spent time with a lot of, you know, just business entrepreneurs and Christian entrepreneurs in general, there's just a lot of wacky things Christians think about wealth. You know, I get all the time, oh, well, you know, you shouldn't go into debt to buy real estate. And it's just dumb. And, you know, in the Bible, the Bible doesn't, the Bible doesn't, doesn't say that, that it's, it's like the more poor you are, the more holy you are. Obviously, we know better than that here um, at Awaken, but a lot of Christians carry it with them. When I felt called to the marketplace, I was living in the East Coast, and I began going out and teaching these seminars and, and you know, on business and real estate, and I would go out and I would teach it, but I would also, you know, I'd always believe for, you know, God, give me one soul. Give me one person I could lead to Christ, and he would. And I'd lead people to Christ. I would pray for healing. People would approach me and just, and I, we would talk Bible. And I'd come back to church and I'd almost get shamed. Well, you know, Jeff, you really should prioritize Sunday, Sunday service. And I'm like, I'm going out and believe in God and, you know, people are getting healed and, and saved, but almost like, you know, that, and, you know, there's, 
one thing that I want, I want you to know, three thoughts I want to leave really, really quick is that you here tonight, right now, are all ministers and all ambassadors of the kingdom of God. It is not just the ministers that come up here on stage. We are, you don't need a degree to be a minister. You don't need to speak in a pulpit. God has called us all to be ministers in our vocation and to go out. But one, see, the, what the devil has done is he knows the way we see ourselves is the way we'll behave. So he wants you thinking, man, I'm just an insurance agent. I'm just, I'm just an Uber driver right now. I'm just a stay-at-home mom. You know? And I used to think that. I would go around, I'm buying properties. I'm like, man, I, you know, and I would talk to like, pastors in the church. Oh, I'm just, I, I, I just buy some real estate, oh, you know, almost like with my tail between my legs. But what, you know, just like God calls a Pastor John and a Pastor Becky to minister in power and they're marketplace people as well, God has called you to do something specific uh, in the world to have an influence and leave a mark that only you could leave. In 2 Corinthians 5.20, um, it says, we are therefore Christ's ambassadors. As through God, he were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might be the righteousness of God. So I looked up, what is the definition of an ambassador? That's the, the God's calling us an ambassador, so it's important to know what that is, right? An ambassador is an official of the highest rank sent by a government or kingdom to represent that that government or kingdom on a temporary mission. This, This time on earth is a temporary mission. You know, it's a blimp, you know, eternities forever. How we live, how we provide for our families, how we promote his kingdom here on this earth is really going to determine our status um, in eternity. So that's our mission. And your work, whatever you're doing right now, whatever, you know, tomorrow morning you're going to be waking up and doing, you know, in your career, in your workplace, you know, in your business, that work is your worship. It's very interesting. In the Hebrew Bible, the word for work uh, and worship is identical. It's a, a boda, I think is how you say it. But in English and in the church, we've divided it to where we worship on Sundays, but then we go to work on Mondays. And, but whatever God has called you to do, that is your worship. But I'm telling you, church, there is an opportunity right now if you are willing to step out in faith and see God for what, what that ability is that he placed inside of you. Maybe it's a business idea you've been you know, too afraid to step out in, but there's an opportunity like I, I, I've never seen. I see what's happening to future generations. I see what's happening uh, in our city. I see the corruption happening in politics. And I don't know about you, but I wanna be the solution. I wanna be the ones that could just write a check to fix a problem facing our city. You know, that we're not dependent on the government, that we're not dependent on that. And right now, right now, let's call a spade a spade. The world is influencing the church much more than the church is influencing the world. Awaken Church is really, it's it's just, it's so special and it's so unique. But this is just not normal in the Christian church in America right now. But why can't it start with us? You know, when you, when you look at, you know, major moves of God in the United States, um, what, what, what was the one here in Southern California? Uh, Azusa, Azusa, and all, all you, you typically see God move from the west to the east. Why can't it start with us? Why can't it? It, it, it just can't. So if you want to multiply today, If you are tired of just maintaining in the area of wealth and you want to multiply, I want you to stand to your feet. You know, if you want to say, God, use me. God, place wealth into my hands, God, not just for me, but for your kingdom, God. You want to know what is that unique ability? What is that talent that he's placed inside of you? We're going to pray in a moment. And I'm believing right now that God's just going to drop ideas. I want you to just, as, you, as we pray, I just want you to listen for the voice of the Holy Spirit. Any pictures that come into your mind, any images or words that you hear. Father, I just thank you for your people, Lord. 
God, I thank you, Lord, that it is you that gives us the ability to create wealth for ourselves, but for your kingdom. And I pray, Father, right now over your people. I pray, Father, everybody listening in this room, anybody that listen on live stream, Father, I pray that you would impart something to them, that you would speak to them right now. God, that you would just stir up in their hearts and stir in their minds. God, what that step is, what that unique ability that you wanna train them with, that you wanna equip them with. Father, release, Father, ideas for business. Release ideas for wealth creation, Father. And I pray an acceleration in this area, God. I pray for the ones, Father, that pursue your purpose. God, that that stay faithful to who you are, Father, that stay faithful to your word. God would be rewarded. God, release that in your room tonight, in this room tonight, Father. Holy Spirit, I thank you. Holy Spirit, you are so good. You are so awesome, Father. Bless your people, Father. And I speak against, Father, any demonic force, any spirits of poverty, Father God, any mindsets around money and around wealth, Father, that are holding them back. Devil, I command you to get off of God's people. And I thank you, Father, that this group, that this church, will be dependent on nobody but you, God. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, amen. Well, true independence and, you know, really understanding why God placed you on this earth um, can only truly happen if you know the one that placed you on this earth, right? Any invention, you know, any technology, you know, uh, that exists, you know, you gotta go to the inventor, you know, to understand how to, how to use it. So I'd be remiss if I didn't uh, give an opportunity for anybody in this room tonight. If you're here tonight, maybe you're a part of this church, maybe you're not, maybe you just kind of stumbled in or were invited by a friend, but if you're here tonight, it's not by mistake. God doesn't make mistakes. Uh, things don't happen by coincidence. God orchestrates everything. But if you're here tonight and you don't know him, you don't have a relationship with Jesus, just like that waitress in the hotel. Didn't know it. She just didn't know him. But if you want to invite the creator of heaven and earth into your life, into your heart, so he could reveal to you why he's placed you here, I want you to raise your hand. Or if you're in this room tonight and maybe you just feel distant from him, maybe you've just been maintaining and just trying to, you know, force things to happen. Uh, you know, in your own power, and you're just tired of the fight. You want to surrender. You know, you want to wave the white flag and say, Jesus, come in, take over. Uh, I want you to raise your hand as well. Thank you, man. Thank you. Thank you. Let's, let's pray this all together. This is uh, the prayer that I prayed on February 20th, 1999, when I invited Jesus into my heart. And let's all pray it together, you know, with with the people that raised their hand. And uh, I just ask you to repeat these words after me. Lord Jesus, I thank you that you died for me, that you went to the grave and you rose again for me. And right now, I ask you to come into my heart. I surrender. I wave that white flag. And I ask you to teach me and train me in the way that I should go. Father, I desire to do something valuable on this earth. I desire to promote your kingdom on this earth. God, show me how. Show me what my role is. Father, and I, and I give you my word that I will try my best to follow you and remain faithful, no matter how long or how quick it happens. I love you, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen, amen. Wow, what an amazing word. I hope you enjoyed that as much as I did. Hey, listen, 
For more information about our church, go to www.awakenchurch.com or subscribe to our YouTube channel if you haven't already and download our app. It is amazing. It is chock full of incredible messages, information about upcoming events, and you can even support our ministry if you feel so inclined. We loved having you with us today. We look forward to seeing you again. God bless you. Live a life that is transformative. Bye for now.